Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Psalm 139, beginning with the first verse. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths of the earth, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, O Lord. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. Those words appeared on a poster back in the 70s. Maybe you remember it. The poster included a picture of a little boy along with those words. I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. It's something to remember when you're having one of those days. A blacksmith had one of those days uh, shortly after he bought a horse from the local preacher. After they finished the deal, the preacher offered the blacksmith some special instructions. Remember, he said, this is a preacher's horse. So it doesn't respond to the usual commands like woe and giddy up. If you want it to stop, you have to say amen. And if you want it to go, you have to say praise the Lord. Remember now, amen to stop and praise the Lord to go. Well, the next day, the blacksmith took the horse out for a ride. While they were trotting down a path, the horse saw a rattlesnake, and it bolted. Before the blacksmith knew it, they were racing head-on to the edge of a very high cliff. The blacksmith panicked and shouted, Stop! And whoa! At the last second, He remembered the preacher's instructions, and he hollered, Amen! Immediately, the horse came to a stop right at the edge of the cliff. The blacksmith wiped his brow, let out a sigh of relief, and said, Praise the Lord. When you have one of those days where you start to get down on yourself, remember the words, I know I'm somebody because God don't make no junk. Now, if the grammar in that sentence makes you cringe a little, you could turn to the prophet instead. The prophet said the same thing, only he put it a little more 
eloquently. The psalmist wrote these wonderful words of faith. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. At the heart of this psalm is the conviction that all life is precious. Your life is precious. The psalmist realizes that, which is why his words are full of joy. The psalmist realizes that the God who loves him and the God who is everywhere doesn't want to have just a casual relationship with him. That's why the psalmist also says, Whither shall I go from your presence, and whither shall I flee from your spirit? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. And if I make my bed in the depths of the earth, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me and your right hand shall hold me. The psalmist sums it up by saying, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. In other words, your love for me is so great, God, that I can't fully comprehend it. Now, what was true for the psalmist is also true for you. Because God's love for you is so great, God doesn't want to have just a casual relationship with you. God doesn't want to have a relationship like the one that was described in the letter that was read last Sunday during the children's message. If you didn't hear it, I'm not going to read the entire letter again, but I will tell you that it was written many years ago by a high school student. In many ways, it's a typical teenager letter with typical teenage relationships However, there's one very important twist. The letter goes like this. Dear friend, how are you? I just had to send you this letter to tell you how much I love and care about you. I saw you yesterday as you were walking with your friends. I waited all day hoping you would talk to me also. As evening drew near, I gave you a sunset to close your day in a cool breeze to rest you, and I waited. You never came. Oh, yes, it hurt me, but I still love you because I am your friend. I know how hard it is upon the earth. I really know because I was there, and I want to help you. My father wants to help you, too. He's that way, you know. Just call me, ask for me, talk to me. It's your decision. I have chosen you, and because of this, I will wait. Because I love you, your friend Jesus. It's amazing when you think that this letter was written by a high school a student. The God who loves you and knew you before you were even born doesn't want to have a casual relationship with you. And here's something else to keep in mind. The more you discover the precious relationship that God has with you, the more you'll discover that God has a plan for you. Oh yes, make no mistake about it, God has a plan for you. Every year we remind our graduating seniors that God has a plan for them. We remind them by giving them a gift. The gift is this travel mug with these words from the prophet Jeremiah on them. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not evil, plans for a future and a hope. God also has a plan for you. Now, you may be thinking, I'm too old to have a plan. I've lived my life or I've lived a good portion of it. Maybe so, but 
God still has a plan for you. The God who has this precious relationship with you does have a plan for you. God's plan might be for your retirement years and what you can do with your life. God's plan might be for what to do when you find yourself between jobs. God's plan for you might be what to do when a spouse dies or you find a marriage coming to an unwelcome end. Ken Gobb will tell you that God has a plan for you. Ken Gobb is a minister and motivational speaker who has traveled to 115 countries around the world. He has helped countless people rise above life's difficulties by sharing the good news with them. He tells an absolutely amazing story, one that is almost too high to attain it. The story that he tells paints a picture of God that is similar to the God that we find in the psalm. He begins the story by asking this question. Do you believe that God loves you and that God knows where you are and what you're doing every second of the day? I certainly do after an amazing experience I had several years ago. He goes on to say that he was walking along a sidewalk in Dayton, Ohio, far from his office in Yakima, Washington. Suddenly, he heard a telephone ringing in a nearby phone booth. He figured it might be an emergency of some kind, so he went over and he picked up the receiver. When he put the receiver to his ear, he heard the operator say, long distance call for Ken Gobb. He says, I looked around Trying to make sense of it, I looked for a camera, thinking that I might be on camera, candid camera. He told the operator that he just happened to be walking by the phone, book, phone booth by chance, so she couldn't possibly mean him. Well, the operator said, is Ken Gobb there or not? Just then, he heard another voice say, that's him, operator, that's Ken Gobb. The woman then went on to say, Mr. Gobb, I'm Millie from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You don't know me, but I'm in trouble. I'm desperate, and I need your help. As the story unfolds, it turns out that the woman was thinking of ending her life. In a moment of prayer, she told God that she didn't want to do that. Then she remembered seeing Ken Gobb on television and said, if I only could talk to him. Just then, some numbers popped into her head and she wrote them down. When she looked at them, she realized that it might be a telephone number. So she had the operator dial the number and sure enough, Ken Gobb answered the phone. He then ends the story with these words. Knowing this encounter could have only been arranged by God, I began to counsel the woman. As she told me of her despair and frustration, the presence of the Holy Spirit filled that telephone booth, giving me words of wisdom beyond my ability Now, what were the astronomical odds of this happening with all the millions of phones and the innumerable combinations of numbers? Only an all-knowing God could have caused that woman to call that number in that phone booth at that moment in time. He then went back to his wife and said, Barb, you won't believe this. God knows where I am. O Lord, You have searched me and known me. You know when I rise up and when I sit down. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Amen.